Who can you trust when it comes to nutrition information? Your hairdresser, your aunt, your best friend's cousin, Google, YouTube. Please be careful and smart about taking advice from just anyone because some of it can potentially be dangerous. Nutritionists are not legally obligated to provide evidence-based information. Some states have laws around calling yourself a nutritionist while other states don't. The thing is there's no one clear definition of a nutritionist and there's no distinction in education even on what kind of qualifications a nutritionist can have. There's a lot of variation around the term nutritionist and in general, in certain states, some people can call themselves a nutritionist and not have a degree or really any kind of formal education and nutrition. There's just so much confusion about it. Because of all this confusion, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics actually changed the name registered dietitian to registered dietitian nutritionist to help ease some of that confusion. Under my credential and a lot of other dietitians credential, you might see RDN instead of just RD so that you know that all dietitians are nutritionists but not all nutritionists are registered dietitians. Anyone that wants to be a dietitian and go on that path, they must have at least a master's level degree of education. The requirement used to be just a bachelor's degree, but now it's a master's degree. Regardless of the bachelor's or the master's, what's always required to be a dietitian is that you have to have 1200 hours of supervised practice in the different areas of nutrition work. You have to do rotations in the hospital, in a community setting, and in a food service settings. I might be missing one more, I think it's education. In these rotations, you basically shadow other dietitians and you kind of gain a more broader understanding and a more broad knowledge in nutrition and the different career paths that you can take. You still can't call yourself a registered dietitian until you take the registration exam and pass it. Legally, you can only become a dietitian and call yourself a dietitian once you've passed that exam, which you can only take once you've completed the internship and the, the degree requirements. Dietitians are also are legally bound actually to abide by a code of ethics and practice evidence-based nutrition. Here's the actual document of the code of ethics that dietitians have to abide by. I usually keep this in my office, but I'm working from home now, so I just have it here because it just reminds me of all of the things that I need to make sure that I'm doing whenever I'm making YouTube videos, whenever I am practicing, you know, when I'm seeing clients one-on-one -on -one, to make sure that I'm giving them the most accurate evidence-based information assessing the validity and applicability of scientific evidence without personal bias. Like I myself, I'm a vegan, but I'm not gonna go tell everyone, you need to be vegan, you need to be vegan. Of course, I would love it if, if people became vegan, but people need to know how to do it the right way. And it would be unethical of me to recommend that all my clients go vegan because of my own personal belief. We have to provide accurate and truthful information. We have to be professional, respectful, and constructive in our dialogue, even on social media. Recognizing and exercising professional judgment within the limits of our qualifications, collaborating with others, seeking counsel, making referrals as appropriate. So there was one continuing education credit I took um, in ethics recently, which you have to have every five years that you renew your credential, you have to have at least one continuing education in ethics. And the presenter was showing there was instances where registered dietitians were definitely violating the code of ethics, either putting up private patient confidential information on the internet or putting up misleading nutrition information. Like the whole dirty dozen thing where a lot of people think this is true because it's been circulating, but it's actually not grounded in evidence-based nutrition. Also, dietitians are required to have a CEU. So we're required to keep up to date on advances in nutrition because nutrition is always changing. It's always evolving. I always say this in my videos. We need to make sure that we're keeping up with the science. Nutrition is kind of new and evolving and it's, it's gonna be like that for a while. And we need to love learning. We need to continue to make sure that we're reading the research and we're staying up to date on the advances in nutrition so that we're providing the most evidence-based and proper information for uh, people and we're not causing them harm. One misconception I commonly hear about dietitians is that registered dietitians knowledge is kind of outdated. This is actually not true. And if we were to practice based on the things that we've learned like 20 years ago, like maybe that, oh, fat is bad and we need to not have any fat in our diet because that's what we thought years and years ago. But based on new and updated research and the evolution of nutrition, we know that now not to be true. We know that we need fat for our hormones to function, to insulate our organs, to absorb certain fat soluble vitamins. And it's more about the type of fat that matters than the quantity. We're not allowed for our knowledge to be outdated. We're not allowed to practice based on recommendations that were made 50 years ago. Is that to say all dietitians can be trusted? I think what makes a good dietitian is that they love learning 
everything. They love keeping up to date on the advances in nutrition and the research. They're also able to differentiate good research versus research that hasn't really been backed up consistently. You can probably find research out there that says everything under the sun, but a dietitian is gonna be able to tell you whether that research should be translated to actual recommendations or if the evidence just isn't there for that. We know that good quality evidence and research that turns into recommendations is proven over and over and over again, not just by one single study. And that is good quality research. Another misconception I hear about dietitians is that we're funded by the meat and dairy industry. I mean, maybe there's some dietitians out there that are, but that shouldn't influence their recommendations. We can't let our personal biases get in the way of the recommendations that we make to other people. If we do, we can really get in trouble with the credentialing body. And the next misconception I hear about dietitians is that they just tell you what to eat and what not to eat. This is just such a black and white misconception about what dietitians do. We don't, we're not here to just tell you eat this and don't eat this because we want to help you make healthier choices for the long term, sustainable healthy choices that you can keep up with. It's not just about avoid this food and eat this food because that's not sustainable. We like to teach about moderation and having treats in moderation because that's just so much more realistic and sustainable than telling someone they can never have sugar ever again for the rest of their lives. So we wanna be realistic and grounded in our recommendations. There's a lot more to being a dietitian than just having a degree or credential. And I hope this video kind of cleared that up. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. I'm really excited to share more evidence-based nutrition with you guys. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys very soon in my next video.